there was a question from somebody who uh, was here uh, the other day and he said like uh, uh, why you always choose for uh, doing things in a scientific way as much as possible and you seem to flirt with spiritual things but you're not really openly doing that so why don't you more openly do spiritual things uh, are you afraid for what your students would think about that and uh, it made me think because I, I never really think about it because as part of uh, professional organizations actually you're being very suspect when you do spiritual things so automatically you choose more for scientific things and then you come to a realization that all these things that these professional organizations do what they consider uh, scientifically viable or something like this is usually not very scientific at all What do you think about it? Should I maintain a uh, more scientific view on things? Or should I uh, do, uh, uh, no, teach people things more from a spiritual perspective or religious perspective maybe, but which for me is the same. Good question, right? Mm -hmm. Not easy to answer actually. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh spiritual way is is yeah very earth uh, it's not very mystic good. very earth yeah for right. me yeah. spiritual is doing lots of things um, practical things mm -hmm. so nothing mystic or something for me it's right. very natural for me right and um if you do everything about uh what's the other name the what you're doing now? Scientific, well, yeah, Scientific? Like mixed, basically, right? Yeah, mixed, basically. I like the mix, also. Yeah. Well, you, you can you can't do without the mix. So this is this is something that is of course very important. But uh, when you when you do these things, there's a part of the audience that needs uh, hard confidence, and some people need more like a feeling confidence, and um, when when I when I make a post, uh, I try to always find a balance between these things, uh, that it is both historically or scientifically uh, sound, uh, but also of course this is very much about feeling, about feeling yourself, right, and about feeling other people. So that makes it very difficult to choose because at the moment when you say like okay we do it more on the spiritual thing, then automatically it becomes for as far as Taoism is considered. It becomes more cosmological so then you have to start including a lot of different other things and it's never only your own body never your only your own personality it's always including uh, other people in the rest of the world you can say but that, that is that is maybe why this is so difficult because then you you like with the with the physical part you can freewheel through the exercises and through the practice and stuff like this even if you're a professional you can relatively free will through these things because they give you insights and understandings and they uh, reveal enough of the systematics behind it like when you're studying Chinese medicine uh, then at that moment uh, you can see through the exercise like oh this is how this works this is how that works but at the moment when it becomes spiritual then it is not a matter of figuring it out but it's actually basically in accepting that it works like that and then figuring out that it indeed works like that but you're already working forward uh, through assumptions basically on some things that you want to realize by using the whole system uh, even though you haven't explored everything every every part of it so that is that is actually a very different part of uh, of, of this story so these differences they I, I think these matter that's but I realized that I started thinking about it like was it just before New Year somebody tell, told me this and I was like, uh, okay, are you blaming me or are you suggesting to me? And I didn't really know what to make of it. And uh, this guy said like, uh, well, you just take it however you want. But uh, uh, I, was, you, you, I already know him for a long time, he's a good friend of mine. So I know he doesn't mean anything bad with it. Uh, <clears throat> but he, he says, I sometimes look at your posts and I'm like, okay, but what do you want? Do you want to go that way or do you want to go that way? And that is, that is basically the issue. And uh, he, he thinks I should take a clear direction. Uh, actually, my teacher said I should take a clear direction. Uh, but I think I take a clear direction, but maybe other people disagree. 
What was the last thing you said? Uh, I, uh, I, I think I take a clear direction in how I do things, but other people disagree. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So I don't know what you think. What you, uh, if you think I take a clear direction. Yeah, I think you have a very steady direction to follow, and yeah. Uh, how, the, how would you describe the spiritual, that? The spiritual way yeah. uh, is so big that what you say, that so, uh, so much uh, you get involved in, mm. so it can also, uh, uh, yeah, it's too much right. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so the way you to take, it's very uh, good to, to teach and to... Uh, to learn mm -hmm. and you can for yourself you can do things uh, think about the spiritual way how to uh, how to uh, 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 how you can put it for yourself in the in the story or in the right. totally I understand yeah okay yeah. what do you think Marina for me it's a very complicated question and not very easy to answer <laughs> um, do you take a clear Direction, yes, basically you do, and I do think that the value of stressing that um, it is very important to root everything that you do in how you do the physical exercises mm -hmm. is a um, essential starting point. On the other hand, you cannot avoid because you you yourself, of course, know a lot about the spiritual part. And um, you, in a certain way, uh, the whole practice is rooted in an, well, for Westerns at least, alien spiritual way. Right. Therefore, it's very complicated to, yeah, to get an idea about how it works and how it could work. Right. Um, so I think you should, uh, the, the benefit for the most people is in the physical thing. Because you need to do that, as you say yourself, before you are able to um, embark on the spiritual path. Right. If you embark on the spiritual path without the physical capacity to deal with it, you're not. That doesn't work either. Right. So um, what I find complicated also is that um, I am not a critical. Uh, what, do you, what do you say? I'm quite skeptical about scientific research and things like that. Well, that's, I what, think that's what science cool. wants, right? Science wants you to be skeptical. Yeah, Sci science is science is limited. I mean, it has its yes, it has a lot of value, and yes, you should not do without it. But um, the blind following of very badly executed. Um, research uh, because it gives a result that pleases somebody is therefore published and then taken as the last wisdom of the world I, I'm getting more and more annoyed by that and that's with and spirituality I, very often also because people very often don't investigate what they are spiritual about no and if then and, and if they do no, of course it, it is very complicated but the, sci the science that we use in, in in Western is highly valued but it has its it has a lot of limitations because it does not acknowledge a lot of things that are also there yeah well, and you cannot research that by the scientific method that we use because it's it's not in the, it's not in the frame of mind why well, yeah, they don't have the right tools and that's basically it because they separate perception and instrumentation very strongly because yes. because because well, their instruments yeah. don't they don't approach what our perception can do and spirituality is very often based on perception while science confirms perception through instrumentation yes. if it's not an instrumentation then it's not real but science al also sees things that uh, perception cannot see at the same time you just take a microscope you know, or uh, to look uh, to the stars radio yeah. signals from the stars or something like this we can't perceive that we think I, I have done like uh, particular Dragon Gate uh, practices where you are trying to catch a dragon from the sky in your meditation and by now I'm like okay maybe this experience what you feel is like because it takes a long time to do this meditation 
these particular cosmic particles that come to the Earth and you try to catch something of it, or maybe the whole thing, and that is experienced by you as a dragon. So perhaps some scientific facts are in a spiritual level, uh, they are just experience of natural phenomena which are perceived by the mind in a particular kind of way because the limitations of our mind and the limitation of the acceptance of the fact that these are also part of our perceptions but we don't notice them normally because we are simply not trained to, to see them, right? And uh, like this, this, this thing, when I was doing this meditation, my teacher said, like, you have to do this only one time and then that fills you and it feels like you're filled with a dragon and that will empower you the rest of your life. But maybe in your life three or four times or maybe ten times or maybe twenty times this happens. So how strong would you be if you catch it every time? I, I keep thinking about that and I have never really prolonged that part because he said you can't take the risk because what if these two dragons fight? And that's the famous uh, part of the eating uh, where uh, the dragons uh, fight uh, with each other because of conflict where uh, the lines change into each other uh, in a radical way, in the hexagram one or two, I forget when, or it is hexagram number two, I think, I'm not sure, I forget, I will, I will look it up. Um, and, and, and that is an advisor's line in, the, in this hexagram anyway, and then at the moment when it says, talks about that, it says when two dragons meet, that's a problem, like in astrology, if you have uh, two dragons and they start a marriage, it's never going to work, very simply. They, they can't stand being in the same room because they fly in all directions and they all the time bump into each other because their wings, their tail, their, their, their heads, everything is in the way all the time. And that's also why uh, that's difficult for other people. And, but, <clears throat> yeah, but it, it stays in your mind at the same time. But it's a spiritual practice uh, which possibly has a scientific explanation. But if that scientific explanation and the spiritual practice coincide, it has huge consequences which should be cultural changing, culturally changing, changing culture, right? Because then how you, how you educate your children has to do with educating them how they perceive things. And then with this extra perception that they can have, of course, then society and the way how we interact with each other will be very different also. And who knows what will happen at that moment? And that doesn't really happen uh, in, the, in daily life because people see spiritual experiences very much as uh, something abstract very often. That is why it's so difficult to talk about spiritual things or mention things from a spiritual thing because people mm -hmm. yeah, they, they make it they make it ambiguous or fake because of their language and because of the limited training that they get to to understand what they what they actually see. They assume things to be whatever they think it is. And it, with, with science, the benefit of science is that at least it tests perception, right? And with spirituality, very often that's not done. And uh, although it's true, there's more than what science can measure, or there's more about uh, reality, what we could perceive probably what science can accept at this moment, because it doesn't accept that we could see that. Then, <coughs> on the other hand, it is good that it does test things, and we don't have in our spiritual ways usually things to test. And exercising, like the Tao Land program and uh, meditations, they are things through which we ex uh, test exercises, uh, uh, results. Because I think you noticed, like when doing the bamboo form at Qigong, when you started, you had a limited amount of experiences from it, but now you already do it for a longer time, and you start noticing there is a layer coming into your body, in your phys physical structure, which gradually changes your perception. And this is what is then called a sort of a purity that is coming about, or a clarity or something like this, uh, which pushes away some of the falsifications that we put in our mind, in our perceptions in general, right? So the re repetitiveness of the nature of the exercises gradually uh, hones your sense organs, your eyes, your ears, your nose, uh, even how you talk, like for instance how I talk now about these things, is so completely different from how I talked about it 20 years ago, or 10 years ago even. And so now, now I, every week I teach this now already for a couple of years. And uh, in the beginning I neglected it because I thought it was too easy. Yeah, but now I can see, you know, okay, so it does also change me in the way that the Tsumuchikum itself didn't change me, it changed other things, right? So then you can see now the separation from exercise, how they all come to different kind of results. And they, they, they change your horizon of perception. So then, the question is, of course, at that moment, uh, is like, how how do you explain to yourself what is spirituality at that moment? I think that's that is the big issue why 
maybe there is not enough clarity uh, for for uh, for these things. I, I, I I'm actually not sure. How would you explain spirituality? <laughs> ah, you're looking very difficult now with your face. Like. <laughs> No, I think it's the way of your soul. Soul. Okay. For Chinese medicine and the Chinese spirituality, there's no soul. That's a Christian thing. So if you're not Christian, you don't have a soul. Even uh, Carlos Castaneda agree with that. But I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's yeah, but, a soul. Yeah, but as a, as a, as a, as a non-Christian, there's no soul. Yeah. I think there's a soul and so, so I the, think we ignore it too much in our life. We ignore definitely a lot about how we experience things, and the soul is God within you, right? Yeah. It's yourself. Yourself is yeah. God. Self. God within you, right? Yeah. That's that's how Christianity explains it. There, so there's no self other than God. Yeah, God is a, a very yeah. It's not just one thing. Eh? No. God. I guess. I don't know. No. But that's, uh, what you say you, about science, I think science is always a step behind. Yeah, spirituality, spirituality maybe also. No, because spirit, spirit, <laughs> spirit, <laughs> spirituality is something. It's in the, um, yeah, to believe or not to believe, and science is something that. Uh, uh, how you say it? They uh, accept, uh, onderzoeken het. Uh, research. Research, and then you have something, then it's then it's there. They research, and then it's a, it's proof. Result. It's proof. Right. But there's always a step behind, we, because we have already uh, noticed it. But let's give you an example. Science discovered electricity and energy, and then spirituality followed. Uh, science discovered uh, quantum particles, and then all of a sudden you had quantum healing. Uh, then they had uh, quarks they found, and all kinds of things. So then they started talking about uh, quark healing, you know, all these kind of things that follow up on, on things. There was all kinds of instruments to test things. And then you had this, uh, are, you, are, you, are you weary things from Italy, this mountain? And they come up with all kind of instruments from wood and copper wire and stuff like this to measure all kind of geomantic forces and stuff like this. Uh, following basically instrumentation that is part of science. So spirituality also follows science at the same time. It also is always a step behind. The individual, of course, on the other hand, is in a now. It's always in a now. Uh, and it maybe tries to verify what it experiences in the now through science and or spirituality. I think the problem is that in that it is very difficult to verify spirituality in the scientific way that we use now, because science can probably research and falsify or prove some of the things that we perceive, but there are a lot of perceptions that are so far outside the frame of thinking in the scientific world that they will never be even researched. True. Yeah. And I think that. Um, for me, uh, I, I think yeah. I have a little bit different idea about what you said about spirituality fo follow science and people do things and they work for them and you call it healing and whether or not it is a, a real achievement of person or a real personal development, that's something I don't say anything about, but they want to, they want to give it a kind of uh, body and therefore they use things that they have found in science, like quantum or whatever. Yeah. But it was a practice that they did, only now they find word for it, it's put it in a but frame that, of mind that is accepted. But is that behind? I think it is more that, bending, the, bending your, your practice to something that is there to explain it to other people. Okay, mm -hmm. but then, then there's several things, like there's this spiritual, you know, there's this uh, development from the Chinese, uh, no, the Chinese, I mean, the French, uh, Academy des, des Sciences or something like this, and they gave uh, Anton Mesmer, they gave an assignment to find an explanation for exorcism in the Catholic Church. 
and it comes up with mesmerism and from mesmerism you get hypnosis and you get uh, psychology you get uh, magnetism uh, forces biomagnetism somnambul healing and you start developing they start developing all these healing methods that's nowadays they call healing but like with you know hands touching and reiki and all these kind of things they didn't exist before that time right exorcism did exist right so the things that they nowadays call healing and they try to cure things uh, in a way like how medication would do that that is actually something that is relatively recent as a development and so it doesn't really exist for a long time in the same way like how we perceive death nowadays everybody said, talks about seeing a white light but this white light was first described in a, in a novel in the beginning of the 19th century and one way or the other this was like a meme and it catch on in so many cultures in such a quick way that this novel itself is unknown but almost everybody nowadays talks about seeing a white light but before that time nobody talked about a white light where your parents are waiting and angels and stuff like this nobody talked about that because you would first go to purgatory which is not a light right so if you see the white light that means you would skip purgatory you would immediately go to heaven well christianity always said no you first go to purgatory and then it's going to be decided if you're going to go to hell or if you go to heaven so you first go to the waiting room purgatory yeah. is like a waiting room yeah. Yeah, it's neither hell nor hell nor heaven yes no. and then you're being measured right you're being measured you're, you're, your ethics is being measured and then you go to hell or you go to purgatory in chinese culture they did different they just said like well you die you first go to hell and you're going to be measured in hell so there was no purgatory there was immediately hell there was the front room where you come and then you're being ex ex uh, shown and like this is the register of all the things that you did and we're going to weigh it and then you go uh, 10 months to that hell you go three weeks to that hell and you go uh, who said huh who said the chinese chinese culture oh okay yeah so you always go to hell but then you oh. you, you get a punishment and uh, depending on how you live you always go to hell but you like there's 10 layers of hell and these 10 layers of hell they have uh <coughs> How do you say they have so many consequences because they are about all different kind of issues what you might have done wrong in your life like littering on the street or uh, being angry against your parents or uh, beating your children or <laughs> uh, killing animals without eating them <laughs> something like this right and all these kind of things you have been doing and you're going to be punished for it and if you if you have done all your punishments then they're going to wipe your memories so you first have ended your life with suffering about to recognize all the things that you've done wrong then they wipe your memories and then they go incarnate you in the next life mm -hmm. so that's that is a completely different kind of perspective that's why there's no soul just whatever is here this is this is you and that everything about it goes to hell and how you experience yourself and that part is going to be punished if it's corporeal or non-corporeal that is for Chinese culture never really a question but what yeah I'm not that that much of a Christian I just <laughs> no <laughs> yes. you're a picky Christian <laughs> yeah I was born like a Christian yeah we so are born like a Christian too my, my so but I'm not practicing yeah but I think there is a soul yeah because but what in the Chinese if you go to the waiting room there's no waiting room you go directly no, to hell. Go to the hell, to the different stage of uh, hell. Yeah. You and then what? As what you go there? You go as yourself. As, as yourself. Yeah, but that is your, that, that is for me the same thing as you go. Uh, only you leave your body here and you go there. When 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 Swedenborg was reinventing Christianity, modern spirituality, in uh, some time ago, some age, ages ago, he said that when you die, you are reborn in heaven in the same way as you were in your in your life so what you did in your life you're con going to continue the rest of your life in uh, for like forever in uh, in heaven so everybody goes to, he said everybody goes to heaven but you will continue everything that you did in this life in exactly the same way that's heaven. that's heaven <laughs> but he described it like that right before that time we never really have a clear description except from dante from heaven but uh, you, how do you say that? Uh, before that time, anyway, the idea of Christianity is that you're you go to heaven and your soul is cleaned, and when you go to hell, your personality is punished, your character is punished. Right? That's a big difference. 
So where your, your personality is what? So when you when you go when you go to purgatory, you go you go to purgatory as yourself, but then your soul is going to be cleansed and go to heaven, and that means back going back to God, right? So because your soul is borrowed from God, but if you go to hell, you go to hell. Right? Not your soul goes to hell. Yeah, your soul also goes to hell at that moment. But it's also to be cleansed, basically. And there's no, never they never talk about how long you stay there. But you basically stay there forever. No, I don't. I I don't know that kind of. That's Christianity. Oh yeah, but that, that's not the way I. Uh, oh, that's another <laughs> thing. That's another thing. I, uh, like like I always say to people who who talk about Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong and they come up with their own theories. Uh, yeah. Who who are we to say that we are have a having a better opinion than history? Because history has a long time of defining yeah. how things are by group consensus, basically, right? So that's that's but the difficult part. I, I what I try to convey in my classes is group consensus, not not not. I try to avoid my own opinions, which is not always possible. But spirituality, what spirituality is, is a very difficult difficult thing. Yeah, yeah. I disagree. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And personally, I, I I think as long as you practice a system, you can do something about your life. But I, I don't. I really have no answer about what is true about the afterlife. Uh, no, I, no, that's a belief. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. There's maybe. people who say they know, but uh, I met Carlo Rinpoche, for instance, a long time ago, uh, when he was the old one and the new one, <coughs> and. When, when I talk with him, I could ask some answer some ask some questions. Yeah, translator. And <clears throat> when I met his uh, young incarnation, you could really look through his life, and he's the only one who they say that uh, he remembers his past lives uh, from mm -hmm. all these lamas. And that was a very interesting experience because you really look into his eyes while you're talking, and you feel like you know you're going into you're looking into history at that moment. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But with other people, you you actually never have that. And Tibetans also don't believe in a soul, basically, right? But they do, just like Taoists, uh, they believe that they can produce something that can incarnate and incarnate consciously. So they have to build something to, to be able to do that. That's why they see themselves as not religious, because they say you shouldn't believe something, you should practice something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I right? think that's true also. Yeah. You have to practice. Yeah. Difficult questions. Okay. I think uh, yeah. I should thank you for the discussion. I think it's very helpful. Uh, I still don't know what I would do with this this guy's remark. It was very interesting mm -hmm. though. Made me really think. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. this with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I put you all in the camera in case it's in the video? Yeah. 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 Okay. No. No problem. I made uh, an extra video at the same time for the parts where uh, you might not want to be in the video so then I would put this one instead yes please do yes <laughs> okay good uh, take good care